Hi, I'm Sportster Paul. We're here with the analog diet. It's how I went from this, 318 pounds, to this, 170 pounds. Took about a year and a half, but most of that weight came off in nine months. Now, I got a buddy back in California. We had a friend who got on drugs. We were worried about her, and I said, well, we got to help cure her. He said, you know, there's no cure. Either she's going to be a little better or a little worse, but never cured. And it might be the same about dieting and food, right? It's not like you get down to some weight and then, okay, I'm done, go back to the way I was. It's a constant battle. So my battle, I gained 20 more. So I'm from 170, I'm up now to 190. Well, I was. First show was eight days ago. I've lost four pounds. I made a little spreadsheet. This is tremendous progress, right? Because really I'm trying to get 10 pounds a month, I think is a safe way to lose weight. It's pretty aggressive, but at least it's not dangerous. So I made this little spreadsheet and that's showing, yeah, I'm right on track. So today we're gonna make a meal. I'm not gonna show you breakfast, did that last show. We're gonna make the main meal. I make two days worth of food in one bowl, bowl split it up, put, put the second bowl away. Today it's gonna be turkey, salsa, and blue cheese. And a lot of blue cheese, because it's the fats in the diet that satisfy you and make you not go crazy at nine o'clock at night. Uh, it's analog diet because it's the three macronutrients. Turkey's the protein, salsa and the vegetables are all the carbohydrates, and the blue cheese is the fat. And they're gonna be about you know, proportionate. Okay, we're getting ready to get our 21 vegetables in the, uh, in the bowl here. I start with mushrooms. Let's get a big mushroom. I'm shooting 24 grams. That's about enough, so. This is the, it's not the top shelf. Top shelf in my refrigerator is all the really high calorie vegetables. This is stuff I keep kind of out in the open. I use these mushrooms in my breakfast omelets as well. Then the, uh, so we just got back from the store yesterday. So we get to cut this. Uh, I tried uh, alfalfa sprouts, but they go bad. So here, I just kind of guess, fourth, this is going to last for the four bowls, which is eight days of food. That's a little much, but I just break it up. And here, flip it upside down. That tends to keep it fresher in the refrigerator for the eight days. And I get two sprigs of cilantro. Learned about this in Silicon Valley, California, when I lived out there. Try to get about half of this one. And... Put that back in the bag. That goes on the upper shelf. Uh, I've got my scale set up here, so it's ready to go. I've got the, the one thing I, I measure most things, but the, so I can tell you, I start every day, turkey, salsa. I know we're gonna use one cup of that, and I know that's 80 grams or 80 calories. Uh, what else? Salsa, the vegetables, which we'll figure out, and the blue cheese. And to figure out how many calories from vegetables, this is just a ritual. You get a pretty good idea. You don't have to do this. But I know <clears throat> here, okay, cilantro, 24 grams. That was the chunk. We'll use all that cilantro. Then the other thing I measure out as we go is uh, jalapenos. I don't use the 25 to 35 grams for all the other vegetables. Okay, so here goes the... Now, what I want to do is, as I cut the other vegetables, rather than just listening to me chop, I'll show you what I ate over the last eight days that allowed me to lose four pounds. So let's get this back to the fridge, all right? And then I get the upper drawer. I don't know if it's a vegetable drawer. I don't know what they call it. And I get all of these vegetables. I, mean, I left the door open for the refrigerator. Okay, that's not going to work. So asparagus, 21 vegetables. So let's look at the, what I had for uh, one of the meals, which was... Let me look at my notes here. I had snapper alfredo. So let's go over that while I'm cutting this. 
Now, before the snapper, breakfast, same breakfast every day, big omelet, about 400 calories. So I start with 12 vegetables, not all 21 that I do in the lunchtime bowl. Uh, throw them in a small bowl. Don't take too much care with the measurements, but add water and toss it in the scan pan. When it's in the scan pan, it's cooking down. I'm doing other stuff, getting stuff ready. After it cooks down and the pan gets mostly dry, I scoop up the vegetables off to the side and uh, pour the omelet. That's cooked. You can see some seasoning on the right-hand side there. Then I shovel the vegetables into the middle of the omelet. Uh, you can see this in the first show, the introduction show I made an omelet. Uh, today's omelet of this day, it came out pretty good. You know, I didn't rip it in half or it didn't fall apart. A little brown because I buttered the pan both before the vegetables and the omelet. For hot sauce, every day a different hot sauce, I try Cristal this day. And uh, I have like four or five other ones I use. In addition to the hot sauce, I like Bookbinder's Creamy Horseradish. Note that it is sassy. So two strips of that on the omelet. And then on top of that, three dollops of sour cream. And the sour cream is going to have about as much calories as the vegetables and the omelet itself. So you'll see, we'll tally it up at the end here. So here it is all done. Uh, it's a big meal, 400 some calories. It sets me until two in the afternoon when I eat the lunch bowl. And here, I, here's a spreadsheet I did. You can see the calories, 409 calories. So that keeps me set completely satisfying, gets me all the way to the afternoon. Then for the snapper Alfredo, I get frozen snapper from Publix. I empty the whole bag. You know, I weigh it now, but the real important is to weigh it after it's cooked. So to get it there, big bowl full of water, throw the two pieces, there's two pieces in the bag. They're in plastic. When that gets thawed enough, then I pull it out and chop it. Meanwhile, I'm doing the vegetables, but <clears throat> chop it up into pieces, get it situated so I think the microwave is going to cook it right. Then toss it in the microwave, two minutes, three minutes. You know, it depends how frozen it is and things like that. Arrange it sometimes a little extra. Then once it's cooked, it comes out of the microwave like this. And, and especially like salmon, you'll notice a ton of fat left on the plate. So I don't want to, I'm not eating that fat. I don't want to weigh it. So then I go to the scale, scrape off the fish, leave the fat on the plate to be washed off weigh it, record that weight so I can multiply that out after the meal. Then here's all the vegetables. Meantime, I've been cutting, getting ready for the protein and the fats. So to those, I take the snapper in this case and just break it up with my fingers. I didn't need to use a knife for this. I break it into small pieces, spread it out over the top, pretty even. Then uh, I like Bertoli Alfredo sauce. Three quarters of a cup, I believe that's 210 calories when you take three quarters of a cup. Pour that on, then mix, 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 and get a nice big bowl. And this bowl is for two meals. It's for today, and then I split it in half, put half away in the refrigerator. And then after heating in the microwave uh, four times, two minutes each, here it is coming out of the microwave. So... I tally this all up as I go every day, and then here's where, okay, 907 calories in that bowl, but remember, it's two days, so that's 450 calories, plus the 400 in the morning for breakfast. At dinner time, about six, I make a big, big 32 ounces of coffee, three big heaping teaspoons, uh, use this nice Italian coffee maker, but then the thing for calories is I add a whole cup of milk. And that's about 150 calories. So when you add it all up, it's about 1,012 calories for the whole day. Okay. That's the first batch. And our... And our... Meal from last week. I've got to get these asparagus up. It's fighting me here. Publix changed these clear bags. They're much worse than the green. They're thinner and clingier. And complaining did no good. So that's the upper shelf in the refrigerator. Come on. Now I go to the middle shelf. That's all this stuff.
many of them aren't open because I did just go shopping. So while we go through these, let's talk about uh, the next meal I made, which was uh, a clam crab chowder that uh, is, is a, it's got a little potato, so it's a little cheating for my no refined carbohydrates, no starchy vegetables. But I'll be cutting these up and you can look at what I was eating last week. All right, here's some pictures. Before getting to the clam and crab bowl, I had a day to finish that snapper Alfredo. So that morning, morning, day before, had an omelet like normal. Came out pretty good, a little brown because of the butter that I use on the pan. And the same, I'm OCD about the omelet. I just use the same vegetables, do it the same every day. The only change is the hot sauce that I put on it. <clears throat> I uh, can't even remember. Here it is all dolled up with the Bookbinders creamy horseradish sauce, all sassy, and three dollops of sour cream. <clears throat> and you'll see, we'll show you the, the spreadsheet of the calories in this. There's a ton of calories in the sour cream. So you can adjust, right? If you want to cut your calories down, just don't use the sour cream. Here's that little spreadsheet. You can see 409 calories in the morning. This holds me off until about two in the afternoon when it's time for the vegetable bowl. So we're finishing. Here's the finished off snapper Alfredo. And I see I cheated. I didn't even remember doing this. I put Parmesan cheese on top of it this day, which wasn't tallied up in the in the calories. So there's probably, I don't know, 100, 200 calories in Parmesan cheese that I forgot to account for. And that's a little sloppy. And, you know, try not to cheat. It, it doesn't really gain anything. <clears throat> then once again, the day before what we're going to show you next, uh, a coffee, whole milk, about 150 calories, exactly 150 calories. <clears throat> so that adds up, you know, it's going to be similar. It'll be more than the 1,012 calories from the day before because I cheated with that Parmesan cheese, which Alfredo is a Parmesan flavored thing. So then, okay, the day for the crab and clam bowl started, same omelet, same deal, same 12 vegetables as in the one we showed you, same 400 and, well, that's a guess. The 409 calories is a guess. I just kind of estimated and, and looked at the total grams of vegetables and said, yeah, I'm probably in the right ballpark for calories, you know, 400-ish <clears throat> with that sour cream. Then here, same dolled up. Oh, I recorded, I used Cholula hot sauce for this breakfast. That's the one thing I change, right? Very up, I have like six different hot sauces I use. And then there's the horseradish and there's the sour cream that we put into it. <clears throat> So for the big lunch bowl at 2, 2.30, same vegetables, same 21 vegetables. You see us cut up in all of these. Uh, the high calorie vegetables are the last to go on. So you can see the, the peas and the garlic and the olives, which are all as much calories as all the other vegetables in the bowl, pretty much. So then for the fats and the, and the protein, New, a can of condensed New England clam chowder, two cans of geisha fancy crab meat with leg meat. I kind of like that. And then geisha brand, I like whole baby clams. And you'll see when we tally this up at the end of this little film strip that there's really not a lot of calories in all that protein. So fish is very low in fat, this type of fish at least. It's not like salmon. Here's the, the bowl with all of that crab and clam meat piled on top. And there's expensive, like $5 a can crab meat that's called lumpy, I guess. This stuff is. And then there's, I guess, minced or a more fine cut crab meat that's $2, $3. This isn't a cheap diet, but it's a healthy diet. And I think your health is worth it. So then I take that, pour on the clam chowder, stir it up, stir it up. It takes, you know, six, ten, twice around, you know, digging a spoon down deep, bringing it up stabbing it, getting getting all the clam chowder and the crab and the clam all mixed together. Of course, there's clam in the clam chowder itself, but I like the big separate ones in that geisha 
that I buy to add into it. <clears throat> then I split them up the way I showed you, uh, the way we're going to do it in today's show. And here's the half, and it's a shame that it, you know I leave it in the big bowl because that doesn't look like a lot of food. I wish I had a deeper angle. You'd see that's a ton of food right there. And then similarly, in, when I was kind of cheating on my diet, I put cheese on it. For this round, I've said, let's leave the cheese off here so we can keep losing. And then here's a little tally I made. Because I didn't put cheese, this only has 762 calories for two days' food. So that's under 400 calories for each day. And that is the way to lose weight, right? You count the calories, you make sure you try to stay active so your metabolism doesn't slow down. I'm doing the gym twice a week and then working outside in the garden. And then this uh, day for the clam and crab bowl ends like the others with 32 ounces of coffee, five cups nominally. And then the calories in that is a whole cup of whole milk, which is 150. So I tallied it all up here, not counting that Parmesan cheese I cheated on, about 940 calories for the day. With the Parmesan cheese the day before, you know, that was a, a little cheater. Okay, that's the middle shelf. Let's get this stuff back in the fridge. And then we'll go... Uh, sorry to be off camera, but... My. And now I'm going to bring the bottom shelf, which is low calorie stuff, celery and uh, green beans. What are these? Snipped green beans. And the high calorie stuff, which is my top shelf stuff. And these are the ones I still weigh out very carefully because there's going to be enough calories. Just what I'm holding here. We'll have as much calories as everything in that bowl. Olives is the worst, highest calorie. I think garbanzo beans is next, maybe peas, one or the other, garlic. And the artichoke hearts aren't so bad, but I need them on top of the garbanzo beans to keep from freezer burn. So let's see if we can get this done while we talk about the last meal I had before this one, which was a, a tuna stroganoff. I wanted to make pork stroganoff, but I forgot to cooked the pork first, and I was in a hurry, and I was hungry. So I uh, tuna's in a can, just opened it up, and I made tuna stroganoff. So here's the pictures of that meal. The day before the tuna stroganoff meal, we get to finish the crab and clam and chowder meal. Same thing, 12 vegetables for breakfast, little bowl, add some reverse osmosis water, butter the pan up, toss it in the pan, cook it, butter it up again, pour the omelet, get that going. Got some seasoning on the right side, you see. Flip that over, and then for hot sauce today, or that day, it was Tabasco, the bookbinder's horseradish, and the daisy sour cream. Just like always, I'm guessing about 409 calories for this. So pretty conservative. You can leave out the sour cream to lower the calories. Then the same coffee, five cups of coffee, three tablespoons of coffee grounds, 150 calories in the milk. So then the next day started out, once again, same omelet. Here's a quick one. It's nothing new here. You've seen this before. Uh, and the, the minor change that I do is the hot sauce I use. So for this day, I used Cristal again. So the same three dollops of sour cream, the same 409 calories. So then we start making the big vegetable bowl. So this is the 21 vegetables like we're cutting today, you can see down below. And then for the protein and the fat, what's left of the sour cream after all the breakfasts, there's a quarter cup left. And then poor man stroganoff is cream of mushroom. And for the protein, two cans of tuna. There's the tuna all glommed on top of the, the vegetables, getting ready to add the stirred up sour cream and cream of mushroom. There it is with a cream of mushroom all dolloped up. I stir it in the sour cream container. It's very convenient. So dollop that on the top. And then the same six, ten times around, get, get it all nicely mixed. This is a very thick sauce, so it does, it's not like you're eating soup. 
then there it is with the two bowls split up. And this gives you an idea, that left bowl, how much food this is. This is a ton of food. And then I wanted to show you some of the ancillary stuff. This is the food waste that I throw in the freezer so that it doesn't start stinking. I used to throw it in the wastebasket and I could smell it after a week. Also, the, I wash stuff out. Here's the stuff ready for the recycling bin drying out after I wash it. So that's ready to go. Meanwhile, here's the, the meal, the half of the bowl. No cheese on this one because we're trying to lose weight. And did my little calculator thing. Here's the, what I keep track of. And for this one, it's amazing. All that sour cream, it's still only 823 calories. So then after, you know, about six o'clock at night, I go and make a coffee, 150 calories in, in the milk. I drink about half of it and might be interested. Then I add a bunch of ice and I have iced coffee to finish it off. And then altogether, this day was 970 calories. So ahead of the game. Okay, so that was my, uh, to me, stroganoff is just add sour cream to it. It's immediately stroganoff. So let's get this back in the fridge. Remember, don't leave stuff laying out. It's food safety. Although I have lost the olives. I see, I forgot the olives. So real quick, I've already drained them. 22, come on. Okay, no, oh, olives, manzanilla, throne Spanish. I learned to get the throne, the placed ones, you can't get them out of the jar. And I cut them in half, as I did in the first show, because there may be a pit in it, and you don't want to break a tooth, and it's a strong fruit or vegetable or whatever it is. Okay, so now we're done. So let's go get our meal. Put the, grab our salsa and grab our turkey. Turkey I get from the deli. You can actually buy thin sliced prepared turkey and use it. Here's the deli. My bill was pretty expensive. It was $160. This $9 turkey didn't help. <clears throat> so let's get this out. I have the turkey right after I shop. You know, anything from the deli, the ham, turkey. I'll show you one meal with pastrami, big slab of pastrami. Let's weigh the turkey because then we can fill in our little thing here, 380 grams, 380 grams. So now we know how much and later uh, I'll get all of this figured out. <clears throat> How'd this young fella do it? Not too well. Oh, that's close enough. I'd prefer one big slice, but apparently most people don't know what a half an inch is. So I ended up a little heavier. 380 is a little heavier than I wanted, but turkey's so low in calories compared to other meats or proteins. It's like fish. So this is a, the reason we can splurge. How are we gonna do this? Like this, I guess. <clears throat> the reason we can splurge on the blue cheese, which I forgot to get, we'll get that in a minute. Okay, so now you can just kind of sprinkle the turkey here, getting ready to mix all this up. And this is two, two days food here. I'm going to split this. That'll be next little engineering project. Okay. Trying not to rush. For some reason, when the camera's running, I feel like it's costing money, and I don't want to bore you folks, but I did want to show you real time making the meal, because it doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, there's, this is a lot of, I, I had a lot of fluffy stuff in here, and the vegetables are fresh, and all right, so there's that. Here's the salsa I happen to like, Mateo's, hot, since it's already had half. I don't have to measure it. There's about, you know, I took a cup out before. I'll take another cup out today. 
so one cup of salsa is only 80, uh, 80 calories. <clears throat> you see this? And I just pour the salsa over here. I have to tell you, I thought I'd be going nuts. The, the, the reason I gained the 20 pounds, two reasons, nuts and cheese. I'd buy a whole bunch of pistachios, eat almost a whole bag of pistachios. I calculated it out. You know me and my spreadsheets. I was having 1,300 extra calories by eating nuts at, in the, at you know, 6, 7 o'clock and then a, a block of cheese at 8, 9 o'clock. So that had to stop. And when we go back, we're doing the analog, the analog diet diet right now. When we get down to 170, then we're going to switch to the analog diet lifestyle, where I will bring some nuts back. I will bring some cheese back, but I'll keep weighing myself, which I didn't do before. And I will keep track of how, exactly how many calories. A, a little handful of nuts is a lot of calories. So don't hold the bowl here because it'll all be on the floor. I've learned that over my life. It's going to take about two rotations around this six times each rotation. It's the stabbing motion that tends to mix stuff better than the digging it out. And there's some fallout here, right? Not the end of the world. I lost track. What is that fourth one? Fifth one. You can see it getting mixed. Seventh one. Eighth one. I don't want to have so much, you know, a lot of fluid comes out of the vegetables when you cook it. And this is one meal it's of several. There's a shrimp meal, shrimp and salsa. The salsa, I, I feel I could eat cold. But since there's laws in California about feeding convicts warm meals, at least two warm meals a day, I think, is the law. Probably backed off on that, too, like everything else. Uh, I feel a nice warm meal is more satisfying. And as you're going to see, it takes eight minutes to heat this up. A little more, I'm going to, because this is a big bowl. And one of the things with all that turkey, there's a, this is a high protein meal. Let's get this, I think we're about done. I, I don't want to drive you folks nuts. Okay, and here's the calculating and cogitating phase of the show that I hope people can follow without a math degree. So there's a bowl and two meals here, right? We want to end up with a bowl and one meal. So zero out the scale, our bathroom, or not bathroom, our kitchen scale. I'll put a link to it for my affiliate. My buddy has an affiliate Amazon account. Make him some money. Won't cost you a penny. So then I know on my thing again, okay, there's 3,095 grams. And that's the bowl and two meals. So what we do is we get 3,095, we subtract the weight of the bowl that I happen to know is 1,513 grams. That's the total weight of, of the food, just the food. Divide that by two, because that's the whole point of this. Now add the weight of the bowl back in, 1,513, 2,304. Make a note of that, 2,304. All this stuff is more like a tea ceremony. You kind of know when you're being honest and when you're cheating. So then I get the small bowl. Endureware. You can put it on the stove top, you can put it in the microwave, you can put it in the oven. Same thing, wait a minute, you know, be patient. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> it hit the floor anyway on camera, had to happen. So, about that much. Okay. And I don't know about you, 23.99. So, I use the eight second rule. My mom taught me. So, oops, God, I'm being a mess. So maybe 100 grams more, 2260, okay. None of this is exact, right? 2301, close enough to 2304. And because I made a mess, it's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? Let's go here, grab all this. I mean, look at this bowl, right? This is, this is gigantic, right? This is a lot of food for tomorrow. I eat, I eat the bowls about two, what is it now? Excuse me, it's about 2.03. 
Okay, so real quick, don't leave this laying out because all the bacteria and stuff falls on it. Get this back in the fridge. That's done. Let's get the blue cheese out. I use this Publix crumbled blue. Meanwhile, we can get this and stir it a little bit more. See, there's always some dry I miss in the middle of those alfalfa. That's no, not alfalfa, it's uh, broccoli sprouts. Get it nice and uniform. Okay, now eight minutes in the microwave, stirring in between, you know, two minute sessions, four two minute sessions in the microwave. Get the top. All right, now we're going to go over to the microwave, heat this up, have a nice warm meal. All right, we got the cam going on the microwave. Get the bowl over here. I've got a paper towel all ready to go. This goes in. I'm going to do three minutes on this first one. And now I want to talk about one of the things I've dreamed up that I think may have some validity. It's the five stages of food grief. And that Kuba Ross gal, Elizabeth, she invented the five stages of grief. Uh, denial, then you're angry, then you're bargaining, then you're depressed, and finally you get to acceptance. I think we have that relation with food like any other loved one. And so when you make a big lifestyle change, like I did, eating ice cream and can you know, Reese's cups by the bag, to get all these vegetables to so radically change, because you're not going to do a diet and go back to the way you were, and, and you'll end up where you used to be. So to do such a massive lifestyle change, there's a stages of grief that you have to go through. For me, it was, you know, of course, being 318 pounds is, is a good place to, to be towards the depression part. Uh, to me, you know, everybody could have their own examples of the denial. Oh, it's just one more piece. This is my grandmother. One piece of cake won't hurt. You know, it's, it's oh, well, I carry, I've heard that. I got a buddy, oh, I carry my weight well. Well, no, you don't. You know, not if you got diabetes and all these other problems when you get older. Young people can get away with a lot of, you know, junk food and stuff. But sometimes you got to grow up, put the fire truck back on the shelf, and start acting like an adult. So... <sighs> To me, the denial, many of us are in denial. Then the anger, how come they can eat everything and I can't? I had a buddy, he, he was like gaunt, I thought he was on meth. It's like, no, his metabolism is like 8,000 calories a day. And your resting metabolism is mostly your lean muscle mass, controls how much you burn, plus your activity to an extent. Uh, so people get angry, how come I have to do this? Then you're in the bargaining stage. That used to be me, it's like, I'll have a big salad, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, slather it with olive oil, more calories than butter, right? Slather it, throw cheese on it, eat all that. You know, that's the bargaining, and most of us are in the bargaining stage. Well, I care, and the fact that you care and you know that it's hurting you, you know that you're not as attractive when you're fat, you know that you have all these health problems, that gets you out of the bargaining phase, but then you're depressed. Oh, I'll never lose the weight. What am I going to do? Oh, I'm so fat. Oh, heck, I just, I'm just going to eat what I want. For me, and they say like in alcoholism, you got to hit bottom before you get to that acceptance phase, before you make that improvement. For me, hitting bottom, I was already on metformin. I had the diabetes. I'm cured now, right? My doctor doubled the dose to 1,000 grams a day. And that's when I woke up and said, I got to do something, right? I got to get to the acceptance phase that if I don't do something about my food relationship, I'm going to die young, I'm going to be miserable, I'm not going to be able to have activities, all these horrible things. So let's, let's uh, cook this. So I think we got, I'm going to check this camera real quick. Yeah, it's running. And we get out here, get this here, go get a spoon, which I forgot to do. Where's my spoon? Maybe I did get the spoon out. Here it is, duh. And then same thing, six times around. One, two, three, four, five, six. Shake it a little. Get stuff off the sides. That's just probably my OCD more than any 
important cooking principle. This towel is important because leaving this ring, that keeps track of how many times I had the hardest time remembering. But now there's a little ring here. That's why the towel's down there. This goes back in, and now we'll just do two minutes. Two minutes. Bang. So, Uh, well, this cooks, the next thing I want to talk about, I'd find, because I was an engineer and a writer, sitting down all the time, I'd be going nuts, you know, when I first started this diet, because I was just sedentary, sitting there, you know, watching TV, working on a computer. But then I learned, if I'd go, you know, just do housework, clean the floors, wash the windows, work on one of my Harleys, right, get up, it didn't just completely push the hunger out of my mind. Even when I got back and sat in the chair for at least an hour, sometimes two, not the slightest bit of hunger. And I've, been, I've seen some studies that say that might be something real going on. To me, your body knows it's overweight, and really it doesn't want to be overweight. But it doesn't know it's overweight if you just sit in a chair. When you're standing, whether it's as simple as sweeping the floor, you know, maybe it's nerves in your feet talk to your brain and saying, hey, I'm a little heavy. I can tell you, the four pounds I lost this last eight days, I can feel it in the belt. I don't feel it getting up out of the chair. But when I get 10 pounds, I will be able to feel it. And then the 20, wow. So I think there's a principle of being on your feet at least an hour, a couple hours a day. I do gardening. You know, I'm trying to get that. Working in the garage, working in the yard. That's why I bought this big house with the, with the big yard to get me off of my butt. Uh, what, if you're my age, you remember, you know, young girls, teen girls in the mall, and you'd look at them, and I remember doing this when I was younger. They're always standing, right? They're not sitting around like my dad used to just sit around. They're always up and moving. I don't know about now. I assume they're all sitting with their little phones, right, and getting fat. But in my day, the young people who are on their feet and moving around, you'd see them joining groups, leaving groups. There's probably some social dynamic I don't quite get. They didn't have a problem keeping off the weight. So that's the principle I wanted to talk about. Okay, get our bowl, put our little pad back, slap this down. Now we got two rings on the napkin to remind us. Three, four, see how quick this is? Five, six. Oh, hang on. You know me, OCD Sportster Paul. A little bit extra, and this goes in. It's already pretty warm. Let's do two. Okay. So, five stages of grief. Standing a little bit during the day to kind of teach your body. Uh, the, the next thing, the scale. I want to talk about this scale, and it's part of being a technical worker where you measure stuff. I'm gonna get my, get rid of these food scraps while we're talking here. Uh, you know, metric, and, and some of this is bad management. If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. But, you know, you do have to. When I gained this 20 pounds, that was because I stopped weighing myself every day. I knew I was eating too much. I knew I was gaining weight. But like that addict, right, I got a little worse. So this scale, I'll put my buddy's affiliate link Right? It's a my way, one word. And it is accurate to a gram. I am just astonished. As a matter of fact, let's, uh, while we're waiting, I got it on Amazon and I just suspected, because, you know, I looked into Jenny Craig, I looked into Weight Watchers, I looked into all of that. And Weight Watchers is based on watching and counting calories. And that makes a lot of sense. Let's tear this out. We'll get our blue cheese ready. So having the scale, it helped measure all the food. So at least you know. And I see these people, oh, calories, that's a bogus concept. No, it's not. Come on, don't be silly. You know the calories matter. You can't slather cheese and olive oil and sugar on everything and think it's, it's any different. And the worst thing about sugars and, and refined carbs Rice, uh, uh, pasta, bread, all the stuff, you know, standard American diet, SAD, 
it, it metabolizes fast. Your body just, okay, I got this stuff. It's easy to, to refine. It's easy to burn. It does that, and then all that extra energy has to go into fat. So let me get... Now there's going to be three rings. That's the last time. Okay. Six times around, shake it, get it off here. See how quick this goes? Put this here. Close this. And do a little more than two minutes. So the five stages of food grief. Standing and moving a little every day to get those hunger pangs completely out of your mind. The kitchen scale and measuring stuff, which is so similar like the weigh scale that I use for my weight itself, accurate to a pound. Uh, the, the last thing I want to talk about is my shopping list. I was writing on this, this green page, you know, where I'm keeping track of the calories and what I'm eating every day. Uh, I was writing there what I need. But it occurred to me, these 21 vegetables, I get those every eight days. So I make four meals that last two days each. That's eight days. So every eight days, I go to the grocery store. So I, I'm, I'm a writer, for crying out loud. So after years, I finally said, well, let's list those 21 vegetables right there. And I actually took the trouble to arrange them as I use this list. Oh, no, asparagus, that's right around the corner in Publix. And then spinach, then kale. And so they're actually, this helps me because of the pandemic. It's October in 2020. It helps me get in and out in less than a half hour. Uh, then I said, oh, along the back wall, there's all this refrigerated stuff, milk, sour cream, the frozen foods, grouper, shrimp, whiting, uh, beef, chicken, pork, that's the meat thing. That's actually on the right wall, not the back wall. And these are in a kind of order that I go shopping. On the front side is all the non-refrigerated stuff. Coffee and, and these, as I use it, it's going by aisle number. So coffee and evaporated milker, I happen to know, are in aisle one. And as I learn, I, oh, I need salsa. Well, what aisle is that going to be? I'll make a note. I just did. Two, two, and two. Salsa, queso, and uh, salsa green. So I'll move those up here. So these are, so I started aisle one, zigzag, two, three, four, skip a whole bunch, then seven for tea, viva, 11. And so this kind of organizes stuff. And then I still got a bunch of stuff here that I'm, you know, when I need it, I'll jot down what aisle I found it in and then put that in order. So this gets me in and out of the store really quick. And, you know, there's the, the public's bill. It's expensive, $160. Don't tell me there's not inflation. That didn't used to be. It used to be like 130, I think. So the food prices have gone up after the shortage. All right, so here we are. We're all done. We can bring it up here. Okay, so I use that paper towel to pop it, up, get it over here, put the lid there, one more stir, one, two, three, four, five, six, shake it. I've been talking so much I forgot to get the blue cheese out, so here's our Publix blue cheese. And around here is the lid. And since there's 113 grams. I'm going to eat all of this, right, for two meals. So I know 56 grams is about half of 113. So on the scale here, I weigh out 56 grams. 55, there it is. 56. I usually take a picture to remind myself when I'm not making movies, taking pictures of all this stuff to kind of remind myself what I've had. So here's the blue cheese. And you'll see this is like, total is I think 400 calories. So that was like 200 calories of blue cheese. Back in the fridge, shouldn't have left it out this long. Okay, so there you have it. That's the analog diet, four pounds in eight days, so far so good. If I can lose another three pounds in the next eight days, that's a big success. 
and you get the tempo, it's like, okay, I weighed, you know, 188, that'll be for three days, I'll be 188, then I should go down to 177. I can feel it here in, in the belt, and I can feel it just being happy that I'm reaching my goals. So analog diet, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, but all the carbohydrates from vegetables. No sugar, no alcohol, no bread, no pasta, no rice, no minimal potatoes. I cheat with that, as you saw with that uh, clam chowder, because it's in the can of clam chowder from Campbell's. But it's working so far. Stick with me next week. I'll give you a next report. Sports to Paul. Catch you next time. Bye now.